and start streaming. And we are up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Furs, welcome to the South Africa Fur Podcast here at eight o'clock at uh, CAT. Uh, we're speaking to a very nefarious fur today, uh, Mr. Rakuin uh, Growlith, Hi. our Hello, resident ZA fur um, admin. He, uh, as, as some of you may know, he is in Austria at this point, um, enjoying no beer and uh, only other alcohols. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Above and beyond that, he uh, has been to a couple of like fur meets and met up with a couple of very, very interesting furs that side. So uh, pretty much what our conversation is going to be about tonight will be about sort of his experiences of the European Europeness and uh, the furries within it, as well as... Um, I think it's pronounced Europality. Is it Europality? No, okay. Europality. Oh, good idea. Definitely Europality. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm here. And Scratch is here, unfortunately, and Napa won't be able to join us tonight. Um, he's busy uh, getting ready for his move up to Johannesburg. Yes. So, yeah, welcome to uh, the podcast, and welcome to you, Raccoon. I remember you were mentioning that we don't re-invite you back to the channel, so yeah, here you are. Yeah, I just got are. that rushed invite once. <laughs> uh, this one wasn't as rushed, by the way. It wasn't like, you know... An hour before the podcast, going, dude, seriously. It was just the same day. Mm, was it the same day? Yeah, I actually yeah. invited him today mm -hmm. because, um, like, the past two days. Everyone else cancelled, apparently. No, no, this time nobody else cancelled. You underestimate how little we planned this. <laughs> how little you plan this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I plan things about two to three weeks in advance. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but yeah, like the thing is, is that Raku and you were due for a, a, a re-invite. Re Nobody actually cancelled this time round. It's just that this past week, for me uh, personally, has been a bit busy, um, and I couldn't get around to anything yesterday. So uh, I invited you this morning, ish. Something like that, I believe. Apples and yeah. pears. Apples and pears. Any case, so welcome to the podcast, and um, good to have you again. Tell everybody who doesn't know you yet about yourself. <laughs> That's quite a, a, a very general one. So, okay, I'm Raccoon. Most of you would have been on the ZA for forums where you would have met me since I'm the admin there and have been on since the beginning. Uh, yeah, and I'm involved in a bunch of furry things here and there. Just yeah. Among them, you're a writer for Flera. Um, what else do you do? You're admin for another site, if I'm not mistaken? No, no, so I did the Sofari Ambassador. Ah, of course. Okay. Sofari Ambassador. Uh, for South Africa, or...? No, 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 it's just a, it's a program the site made for people that can try and make people feel more at home there and also promote the site elsewhere. Oh, like so. a community representative, then, to an extent. Yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. It's sort of, yeah, pretty much is like that. Mm. Awesome. All right, so your, um, you recently, I think it was last weekend? Yeah, definitely yeah, last I, weekend. We were speaking to Green Raper that evening. Uh, you were at a, um, what's it, Lakeside Furs? Yeah, Lakeside Furs. So I only got back yesterday. Oh, jeez. Wow, was it like a long holiday thing? It was from one Saturday to the next Saturday. Ooh. All week. Nice. How many furs were there? So there were about, I think it was just under or just over 50. Right? I think it wound up being a bit, let me find, I can find the site. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, it's yeah, so there had 51 registered, but I don't think everyone came. There was a rather interesting happening with the Slovenian group that was going to join. So, yeah. Oh, do tell. We all love a little bit of gossip. Okay. What it happened to the out, Slovenian group? Yes, anyway. Yeah? There was a group of Slovenian furs, and <clears throat> somewhere in Slovenia, there was a dog shelter that was getting shut down, and they were going to obviously have to euthanize a bunch of the dogs. 
So one of the Slovenian furs adopted a dog, and for that reason, about four of them had to cancel. Okay. Yeah, okay. you can try to figure that one out. But... I'm, I'm trying to because it's a bit more difficult than it seems. Mm -hmm. one, one adopted a dog and four of them had to cancel. Yeah, well, one was obviously that guy. Naturally, yeah. he had adopted a dog. But, you know, three other people that don't live with him, it's like, no, no, we also can't come now. Because of dog? Yeah, because he adopted a dog. Okay. I guess they were somehow felt they needed to be there. That's strange. But, it uh, is. And that was like the week before it was about to start. They tried to can Well, they did cancel. No, oh, that's, uh, that's weak source. Well, I mean, you know, spur of the moment things do kind of happen. So tell us about the Italian furs. I remember you had a conversation <laughs> with one of them and mentioned him specifically. Uh, aside from the fact that there's apparently a language gap between you and him. Yeah, I, I said he should maybe come on here and talk to you guys because I thought that might be interesting. I, I'm not sure if he quite understood exactly what I meant there because it... I mean, then he started talking about trying to organize some other convention and things like that. But uh, the, the part I found interesting was just when he was talking about the Italian furry community there, how it had only really been going for five years or so. Uh -huh. And that was, you know, that, that the furs were young and they just hadn't known there were other Italian furs around. And it, it was just something that I found surprising because you always think, like American and European furs, that the community has been going for ages. And I mean, that's obviously true for the American furs, but it seems like perhaps non-English speaking areas, it's not always the same. And so it seemed like the Italian and the South African forums were quite, quite similar. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, like you said, you, you always have this idea that people from overseas have, like, they have something like this, like pretty much sorted out, like, They've been in the business for a lot longer than we have. Mm. But good to see that there's some other like fandoms that are still young and burgeoning and whatever. Well, I mean, I mean, it's 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 not dissimilar from the from the Brazilian furs at this point. I mean, they've also started their most recent con, and oh, yeah, I mean, cool. they they hit fifty the very first time, <clears throat> and uh, they're actually slowly growing. But then again, I mean, to a large extent, I think that if, if we look at Brazil and, say, look at South Africa, I think we could actually be a little bit more established. Mm. I mean, people know about us at ICON, people know about us at um, GeekFest, people have seen us around at um, all the other places. So the, oh. there, there is, I mean, like, and not to mention the, the wonderful parades that, that our people join. Our people, our community. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, at least we're out and about. And I guess that in, in other places like Italy, um, not to say that they're conservative, but they could be a little bit more conservative than South African can be. Uh, oh, really? I'm, I'm not sure it's necessarily the same thing there, because if you were isolated from, let's say, the fair community, and even if there were people going in a parade, you're not going to know about it. Yeah. So that's not going to get some sort of furry connection ready. Mm. That's, yeah. I think it pretty much you have to have the right um, framework online. And they're saying now you've got the Facebooks and the WhatsApps and stuff. It's a lot easier to find groups and communicate. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, is that, I mean, I mean like young furs aside to an extent, uh, they, or at least young fur problems aside, sometimes uh, that, that we tend to get every now and again. New furs, I guess, would probably be a better term for it. They do tend to, to reach out. I mean, like, you've never sort of had, it, had a month where one fur joins and that's that. They generally tend to sort of bring one or two friends along with them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then obviously they get sort of mixed up in the WhatsApps and the... Uh, other various groups that are out there. Um, I mean, like what Google Plus is actually picking up in furry numbers. It's actually quite insane. If you yeah, think I about didn't it. join it on principle. But. <laughs> oh, at at six thousand people on a Google Plus site created practically by a South African, um, 
Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, no, it's not bad, definitely. It's a, yeah. So we are yeah, branching it's, it's, out it's, at least. So again, Raccoon? Uh, I was just saying we don't need to go into the whole Google Plus why I don't like it or anything like that because it's off topic. But. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no true. Um, but I mean, like, <laughs> at least at least there are methods and, and means to actually get out there. I mean, like, the Google Plus is one of my ways of actually communicating because the thing is, is that there are people on there who wouldn't necessarily be on the ZA First site and immediately finding the sort of stream because I posted on like the three biggest groups there like every single time they tend to sort of come out of the woodwork and go holy shit they're South Africans. No, yeah, which is nice. Yeah. And then you point them to the WhatsApp group and then they, yeah then everything just falls into place more ha ha. Assimilate. Basically. Any <laughs> yeah. Anyway so um like, how's, how's your experience been up there? I mean, like, you've met a couple of people who used to be South African furs, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, I haven't met people that used to be South African furs. I heard about there being one or two South Africans that were up and around. Um, mm -hmm. And I met one fur who's been to South Africa a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I've actually met a couple of people who've been to South Africa. Um, Willing to come again it? if there was a con? Well... I did mention, you know, the con to a few people, but, you know, it's quite a long way and a lot of money to get down there for, you know, a small free yeah. convention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I was talking to Tanit, who was at the meet, who I think you should know because he's on the IRC group. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Tanit has been popping in and out. Yeah, so, I mean, I told him to talk to you, Ivik, uh, because he, he was going to come in about six weeks to volunteer at some wolf park again. I mean, not wolf, uh, lion park. Yeah, uh, it was a lion park, yeah. Yeah, but he hadn't uh, heard back or anything, so I said, well, you know, if he needs a place to stay, maybe you'd be able to help out and you'd know people, so. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. But yeah, so he also had some really nice pictures of his time there, so. Huh. All right. Um, any news from Flayra that you want to sort of elaborate on? Which you've recently uh, posted. Yeah, my involvement with Flayra is, you know, more if I write something and post, you know, news and opinions on there. It's there's not too much Flayra news that goes on. It's just a place for people to sort of put out their own ideas and to create content. So. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean, in some of the content that you've that you've created, I remember we were speaking about. We had a very, very sort of, one could call it a very shortened version of a conversation in respect to furry music. Um, oh, yeah. And now having you on, I mean, it would actually be an interesting thing to actually talk about it with you right now while we're at it. Well, I mean, slightly related to that was, I mean, because I'm going to go to Euroferns next month. So part of the, you know, furry music and the defining the furry fandom you remember I wrote about that like three or four years ago or something? Yeah. Um, I think it was three years ago. But I mean, I, I was going to put that into a sort of talk, you know, some sort of presentation yeah. at Euroference. And I mean, I, I also talked a bit about that just normal conversation at Lakeside Furs. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it was quite nice to just be thinking about it again. But I mean, we could talk about it here as well. That's, well, I mean, it it is one of the, sort of like the the main topics, and well, not necessarily one of our main topics, but the thing is, is that it is something that, I mean, would need a little bit of elaboration because I mean, you've mentioned while we were talking about it on two or three different points, and we haven't necessarily like sort of directly involved ourselves with the conversation. I mean, now'd be as good as time as any. Mm. Yes. Uh I'm not sure what you want me to say about it or if well, you wanted to just start somewhere. You know, <clears throat> what was the original premise? Why exactly would you or were you interested in the sort of like that, that idea and that concept? Well, I was just going on. I mean, it's from earlier. It's been sort of the saying what is and isn't furry. And the issue with the music, I, I can't remember what inspired me to do that post at that time. But it's... 
I mean, if we take Foxamo, for example, he's like really well known as a very musician, yeah. but a lot of his stuff is just uh, instrumentals, you know? Mm. And so you got to ask, how is that then furry? Because well, I mean, it, in in yeah. that same sort of sense, like a song like "What Does the Fox Say," would you consider that to be furry music? Well, I don't think there's really anything furry about that, except I think they dress up as a fox once. But well, I would but say you'd need. Yeah. It it does have the topic. That's the thing. Like I mean, like uh, what what do you discount or what do you sort of place into the entire thing? Well, as I was saying, it would have to be some sort of furry content. In this case, almost certainly in the lyrics. But I mean, mm -hmm. what does the fox say? There's nothing about like an anthropomorphic fox or a furry fox or any relation to the fandom. I mean, if you're just going with what does the fox say, that could just be a normal animal drawing. That mm -hmm. wouldn't be furry. So, well, yeah. That's true. And then remakes of like popular music with different lyrics, things that like people like uh, Duke the Dancing Dog works on tends to do that quite often. Um, there's that one tiger, I can, what's it, he, he sang a song called I Can Play My Keyboard in My Tiger Suit. I don't know the song, but I mean, I did mention that you can do the remixes and it can take a non-furry song and make it furry. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, there was that All the Single Furries uh, parody of it's a Beyonce song. <laughs> and that was one I used as an example. <laughs> So there they've changed the lyrics and, you know, they've done the music video all in fursuits. So there you've got the furry aspects there. But I mean, it, if you just, I mean, some people might say then, okay, you're saying furry music because it's music done by a furry. But that's using the adjective furry in a very different way to the normal furry art depicting a furry character. Oh, and so yeah. like I've mentioned, you wouldn't say furry cooking. And if somebody just drew a landscape, but there happened to be a furry, that wouldn't be furry art. I mean, you wouldn't say like, oh, look at this landscape, it's furry art because Blotch did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe some people would, but I would think most don't. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Like, just the fact that it's done by someone who happens to enjoy a certain subculture or whatever doesn't define it. Everything you do in your daily life isn't furry X. Yeah. And I can't see any reason why you'd suddenly make an exception just for music. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Like, hmm. Mm. <coughs> in silence. <laughs> no, it's just. Uh, sort of thinking about like what what would be a follow up question in respect to this, so I mean like obviously you now you've you've made this sort of uh, we'll call it a scientific observation for now, um, but like in respect to what can or what cannot be called something and something else, like what was the exact sort of like principle of of how you sort of defined that I mean like what was your what was your um, well, let's let's talk about your inspiration about this. Like, what inspired it? Uh, specifically on the music part. On the music part, yeah. Yeah, like I said, in the I can't remember why I wrote that one at that point. I think I just probably seen it referred to, you know, people saying like furry music, you know, a number of times, and then eventually I was like, okay, let's say something about this. I mean, I can mm -hmm. check in the piece and see if I mentioned why I did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, while you're at it, I mean, like, obviously, uh, when we look at, say, furry music videos taking, say, popular songs and actually then recreating them for, say, their own things, I mean, like, again, I'm going to mention him probably about on two or three more occasions, but I mean, Duke the Dancing Dog tends to use, like, songs and obviously, I guess, would the term be furifies them? Scratch help uh, out here. I don't know. I suppose that would be it, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that... Uh, does that even count as it? I mean, the thing is, is that it's not an original piece. It's just mm -hmm. somebody who's taken the liberty to, to change the lyrics around a bit. Firstly, for copyright reasons. Mm -hmm. And secondly, for... <laughs> for like you know their own personal like projects and things like that I mean in that same sense I mean 
people could bronify practically everything. If you really wanted to, you could go out as a as a brony master and, you know, got to catch all the different types of... of I've seen, like, my little pony crossed with most things. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'd say yep. that does... You can make it very that way. I mean, you can think about it. It works in all sorts of other examples. So, let's say, like, when they let it go from Frozen, and you know, everyone mm -hmm. was like that, and then they made the metal versions and, you know, rock covers and stuff. And that music was then metal and rock, you know, because of how you change it. And in the same thing, if you had someone that made a sculpture of uh, the Statue of Liberty, but instead did it as a vixen instead of a human female, you wouldn't say, is that actually a furry statue now? You'd say, well, that's a furry statue. Or if you redraw the Mona Lisa, again, you, you, you do the change, and then there's that aspect that now makes it furry. Hmm. Uh, King Kinzade mentions that, like, you know, the entire thing is that's dancing and he believes that it's personally different. I mean, at, and at the end of the day, you're literally using preset dance moves and um, sort of incorporating them into a fursuit. Well, I mean, I'm not sure about the Duke stuff, if he just dances or if they change the lyrics or something, so... Yeah, I don't know what exactly happens. But. I, I, can give you, I can give you an example, but I mean, obviously you can't necessarily watch it on the stream. Um, <laughs> yeah, it would be... Uh, otherwise, we will hear your music. Yes, and then we'll have copyright law problems. <laughs> yay. Uh, yay, yeah. Um, duke, duke, duke. Carry on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I was, uh, I was thinking more along the lines of... Um, Someone like, um, like uh, Lab Fox, Renard Queenston, like m the music that he writes, like it, it's again not specifically pertaining to any one uh, part of the fandom, and like not all songs, if any, actually really have any like furry terminology or, or um, connotation to them. But he very like all of the characters that he creates that quote-unquote makes his music, like for every style there's a different character. Those are all like, or at least most of them, anthropomorphic characters. Like, does that qualify? It, I mean, it's sort of definitely pointed at that market, but that what he's selling isn't, uh, the actual product itself isn't really, like, pertaining to the anthropomorphic sort of fandom, I believe. I didn't quite get what was going on there. <clears throat> no, I'm just saying, like, uh, something that, yeah, you mentioned something that's created by, uh, by a furry is not necessarily, like, always furry art or furry music or whatever. But yeah. he, uh, like, someone like Bernard Queenston is really uh, kind of using it as a little bit of, uh, I wouldn't say a marketing tool, but he, he has quite a bunch of followers in the furry fandom just because of um, the fact that every persona that he has that creates these different kinds of music are all like furries. Would that count? Like is that aimed at, you know, it's, it's being marketed almost directly at furries but it's not specifically furry. Like does that count? Well I'd say in those situations it sounds like it would be furry. Then I'm, I'm the sort of one that says, you know, if it's furry, it's determined by the content, not who makes it. Mm. So I'd say, you know, there's some Disney movies. Yes, they're furry. Like Robin Hood, I'd say, is a furry movie, even if it's not made by furs or for furs, just because of the content, it's furry. Okay. Fair enough. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Ivy, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I uh, posted it onto the uh, thing. Um, it's uh, for those of you who will be listening to this after the uh, stream. It's uh, Duke the Dancing Dogs. I like how it feels. Music video. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there is a uh, an extensive bit. I think it's a small rap piece done by the tiger that I was speaking about earlier, who actually um, sort of changed the the lyrics a bit. Uh, we, jeez, now I've got to find the lyrics for this. Nah. Ooh. Nah, never mind. We'll find it. Yeah. 
but any case, those of you who, who, who know the video um, or will see the video directly after they've listened to this, um, it, it does have some sort of extensive what one could call furry lyrics in it. But, I mean, in, in that same sense, it's also different. It's, it's difficult to an extent to, to say talk about furriness in the same way that you would also say talk about being a werewolf. I mean, does being a werewolf count as being furry? Well, I'd put it pretty much, yeah, I'd say most people consider werewolves to fall under the furry with the transformation and all that. So. Yeah. But there's obviously a lot more sentience in that sort of kind of perspective as well. I mean, um, as, as we know, werewolves of lore, they tend to be a bit more or a bit less cognitive or... Um, in control of who and what they are as soon as the full moon comes up and things like that. I mean, like, if that's the case, uh, when, when it comes to furry music and werewolves, there's, I mean, a song by Ice Earth, I'm pretty sure you might know it, called Wolf, uh, that talks about pretty much the sort of quintessential werewolf, the sort of what people wrote about it, what people made movies about, all that kind of stuff. Would you call that furry, though? Well, I've heard of the band, don't know the song. Uh, I'd probably say it could be, yeah. I mean, the thing you'd go on to then if you're worrying about the mental ability is whether you think that having the human mental condition is necessary for something to be furry. Mm. And so then you'd ask, you know, if you have a definite uh, furry anthropomorphic fox that had the same mentality as a normal fox, would you still consider the character furry? If, yeah. if that's what you're getting up with the werewolf thing. Um, that, that is kind of what I'm trying to mention, yeah. Yeah, in my earlier attempt to define furry, I said, you know, it just has to be a sort of significant mixing of the human and non-human. And so I would say in that case, it would be fine. And you could maybe, I mean, the one that might be more controversial would be if you just had, you know, instead of taking the human body and or taking a human and changing the body if you just change the mind to be more wolf-like even with, without the body if you'd still consider that furry I guess um, mm. it, it's, no, if point. you're going it as a, a purely shape and physical transformation or if you think the mental things essential or which part you want to focus on but I mean th that's partly why I was saying you need to have a definition is so that everyone's saying the same thing when they say this is furry and this is not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that does make sense. Mm. Well, that's not, yeah, sometimes yeah, having having like too strict a definition just sort of bogs down people's sort of uh, it it raises the barriers to entry for for some people who would say, oh, this is kind of cool, but then someone would naysay them for being wrong on one or two of the more technical aspects. So, I mean, I, I suppose, like, a, a, the, the definition that we have, as, as sort of general as it is, is is good enough for most people in the fandom. But, yeah, people outside might find it a little bit, like, too technical or too, like, constraining if you put too many adjectives and yes buts to it. Well, that was one thing that came up uh, at the, the meet when I was talking to people. And uh -huh. so, I mean, that asked the question at first, how would you describe furry to like an outsider? Uh -huh. And then when I mentioned my way of defining furry, they were saying one of the things that came up was, yeah, okay, that's more of an internal furry definition because it might not be a great one to start uh, explaining with. Uh -huh. what, was the, what was the definition? The, the one that no, he gave, like... My original one with the, you know, mixing human and animal and significantly different to the original forms, uh, that sort of thing. You might have seen it <laughs> at some point. But they, they were saying that's, you know, more of an... Uh, you, you would say, use that one with other furries to, you know, try and find out exactly what you would call furry. But if you're talking to someone from outside the fandom, then just saying anthro-animals would be general and simple enough and mm. so mm. Yeah, it, it'll again depend on the context I mean um, 
we've we've uh, we have spoken about sort of like how one defines the entirety of being furry, and I mean it generally sort of moves into the entire idea of how did we find it, I guess, um, which has been sort of like a general theme as to what we do speak about a lot of the time on the forum. Uh, we've never actually found out whether you agree or disagree with our definition um, in in respect to the idea that like it's people who like the idea, and I'm pretty sure that Anpu would be able to say this a bit better than I do, but people who like the idea of, you know, watching animated characters like that and seeing them sort of come to life uh, to an extent, or do you think that's also too complicated? That's pretty similar to what I would say, actually, so, I mean, I think that's fine. I would for example, mine, I would just say then a furry is someone with a preference for furry characters, mm. I mean, which is quite similar to that. Yeah, so I think that's the right way to go with it. Mm. I mean, because I don't like the way of trying to say it's got something to do with an identity and identifying as some other animal because I think that would exclude a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, maybe not a lot, but... <laughs> No, no, I mean, that's, you know, falls. <laughs> and it's, yeah. I and mean, that's just a silly sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I mean you've, you've been in the fandom for probably more than since 2008. But, I mean, like, have you noticed any sort of distinct changes? I mean, you, you involve yourself quite deeply in a lot of things, I guess. Okay. And, I mean, I'm assuming that, like, your... your <laughs> Findings might be different from somebody else, but I mean, has any has has anything changed since sort of like your inception into the entire thing? Um, in try terms to be as of honest definitions, as or in terms uh, of how in, in terms of like community-wise, uh, both South Africa and throughout the world, from what you've seen. Well, I'd say there've definitely been changes. I mean, the biggest one I'd say is that it's moved. I mean, now pretty much everyone's, you know, on Fur Affinity or, you know, So Furry or Ink Bunny or whatever. But when I was first getting into it, I mean, I wasn't as involved, but there were a lot more smaller sites. So either targeted to specific things. So a site, for example, I was on a site that was just about Pokemon, for example. And there were sites for just the Lion King. And there were sites where just people would go to do, you know, some role plays. And Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, well, I didn't know anything. Well, I knew about it, but I had no involvement with that. Mm. But there was also, I think because, you know, Yahoo used to have that GeoCities thing. So there were a lot of firms that also um, used to have their own private little pages. Yeah. So well, I know there were people... groups as well. Yeah, well, those are still around, I think. But I don't think they necessarily... I, mean, I, I joined a whole bunch of those groups when I first started out. And um, eventually it sort of degraded to a large extent to a point where um, I don't think necessarily that Yahoo security is as strong as it should be specifically because uh, every single update that I've ever gotten yet from Yahoo ever since has been you know a single woman looking for you in your area <laughs> I mean, a few emails so, like that recently say again which one? I've got a few emails like that as well mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, so I think in that way, the furry fandoms moved a bit away from being sort of split up and more individual into now everyone uses, you know, one of, let's say, what's it, four or five mainstream sites, mm. which is perhaps a bit sad in some ways. Perhaps it makes it easier than to find people because, I mean, you don't go through the effort of trying to set your own thing up, but... I mean, at, yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, like with, with and I know that your, your, your dislike of Google and Gmail and all of that kind of stuff, especially the uh, Google Plus thing, um, I mean, it, 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 it does allow one to actually create little Google groups and have little RP sessions with the friends that you happen to find on there, at least. And so, I mean, it, it, I'm not necessarily sure whether it has... It's gotten rid of the entire idea of sort of like having individual small groups of of people with like mindedness. It just brings them closer together so that they could split off eventually. Well, it's 
Oh, you could put it that way. It's a sort of, but everything's still then under, you know, Google. So you've moved from like lots of little places where you can get together to maybe making your own smaller places, but under certain big sites. I mean, I suppose that's really been the case for the internet as a whole. I mean, you used to have, you know, a whole bunch of search engines. Now it's pretty much just Google that people use. And, you know, you didn't have, I mean, everything you use. If you want videos, you pretty much use YouTube. If you want, otherwise, you use Facebook and you use Google. And, you know, that's the only site you use. So it's not separated. Mm. I, mean, I don't know if that's, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's not. It's, Depends on how it, benevolent Google will be. Well, not just Google. I mean, now you've got, for example, for Affinity sold to some private company. If, you know, a large amount of your, your user, your ferry, well, a large amount of the ferry community uses FA, and then let's say Invu changes something, it's going to have a large effect. And people, I know a lot of people now go and make other accounts, but they might not have the backups. Whereas if you had your own little site, you were pretty much in control what happened there. And if something, yeah. you know, some other site went down or had some problem, it didn't affect you. Yeah. Now you're just very dependent on these main sites. Yeah, if one of those main sites went down, you're kind of shit out of luck. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting perspective, I guess. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously something that must be watched out for eventually. But, I mean, I mean if, I can, if I can remember some of the things that I could like, find, and some of the f sites have become defunct over the years. But at least they still exist every now and again. I still go to a couple of them and I go, ah, nostalgia. And then and even exist, look. but then they get closed down. And Macrofile mm. has been running for I don't know how long. It's been running since two thousand one, if I can remember properly, uh, because that was my first encounter with it um, when I was still in primary school. Haha. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> I'm answering myself, and I'm answering the questions as to whether I was watching porn when I was thirteen. Yes. Cool. Um, <clears throat> can I take a shovel away from you now? <laughs> Says you, by the way. Yeah, um, I don't implicate myself in anything. I implicate myself in everything. Exactly. You just, you you do you then. You do you. Well then, fine. I'm I'm not speaking for you or for Rakuen, for that matter. I'm I'm literally just speaking for myself. The thing is, is that those things were around. They were around and they're still around. They're just not being used by anybody right now. Mm. Nobody's uploading to them. Um, I mean, it's the same thing with the RTT system. Um, I mean, how RTT? many people actually... St what am I talking about? I'm talking about absolute bull crap right now. Um, RSS. RSS, that's the word. Don't people use that? I still use that. All my live bookmarks are RSS. A lot of people have started moving away from that. Don't exactly know why. I mean, it used to... And, and like there, there, was a, there was a big article about the entire thing that the RSS feeds were... Mm -hmm. oh, my God. Uh, sorry, I was distracted. Um, <clears throat> like they're they're busy moving towards you know proper news sites. I mean, obviously, once again, Google's name pops up again, because I tend to use Google News. It it gives me all the news that I need to know, and anything beyond that, I try to search for. Or I go to the Young Turks, which is on YouTube, which is also Google. Um, and, and, you know, to, to an extent, we can probably all feel very, very sad that, you know, we don't know all the intricate things anymore. We don't go to all the, like, you know, small little places, those little nooks and crannies that we used to like. But, I mean, at the end of the day, information has to be made free and has to be as, as fast as possible, I guess. And I'm not necessarily sure whether going through an RSS feed and scrolling all the way down until something actually catches your interest. Um, is is a way that a lot of people really want to do it anymore, unless you're a hipster. No, no. Like, but how else? I mean, if you've got one of these other feeds, you're still going to have to scroll through everything that comes up. Mm. Mm. But the thing is, is that it's it's uh, a lot of the time it's it's more relevant already. Um, yeah, but that it's just like, depends. It's like going what... through your favorite. Look, it's it's like going through your favorites list on FA. I mean, a lot of the time you will, and at least maybe I'm the only person who does this. But a lot of the time, I would uh, 
open up my my favorites list, uh, or at least the the ones that people have posted recently. Scan through the minor images or the small images, the little icons. Uh, see what I like. Open those, and then the rest of them get put into my I have deleted you pile. I didn't see any reason to do that, but I mean. Well, I, I don't think... see any reason to open up all the other pages if I'm not necessarily going to like the art as soon as I've seen the icon. Mm. But that's not favorites. You mean your your watch list? Yeah, my watch list. Okay, because you said your favorites. Yeah, so. that's that's what I meant. I'm sorry, my mistake. Okay. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of people probably watch artists a lot more than I do. I mean, I've been far more select, I think, but... Scratch, yeah, it's really then. Do you watch? Uh, let's, let's do this. Let's let's yeah. For affinity, FA off. God damn it. Tada. Open yours. No, I wish you'd oh, glorious fox butt. Tell me your secrets. Uh, let's see. After login, how many people am I watching? Uh, I think it's quite a few. Okay, I've been registered since 2006, apparently. Um, I have a full list of 229 watching. Okay, well, that's a fair and amount. You? One sec. I'm, just, I'm so, just trying to see all where I've got all the people that I watch. All the people that I'm watching, 217. Okay, well, I mean, I've got my sort of secret FA that I'm not supposed to have. Hmm. But I mean, that one, I'm watching 78 people. Okay. So, I, mean, I can see, but then again, I mean, like, you have to be select sometimes. I mean... Well, yeah, I mean, if, it sounds like if you're watching too many people, then, yeah, obviously you're not going to get the things. But if you've got a feed that's more select, like, okay, these are the things I want to follow, then... Is that just by tag or by what? Well, it, it depends. I mean, I tend to only watch artists if I've seen them, that I've seen their work somewhere else and saved it, you know, three or four times in the last, you know, whenever. And I'm like, okay, I'm saving this person a lot. I should watch to make sure I don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. It's, that's sort of the way I go. Because um, otherwise, if it's just, you know, they've done one or two nice things, it's like, okay, I'll just take that. And, you know, if I miss the next thing they do, it doesn't matter. Because I'm probably not going to care. Mm. Yeah, that's a fair yeah. point. Yeah, and I mean, if, if it becomes, even on my uh, FA as well, it's just become a little bit too cluttered. Sometimes there's like an ongoing comic strip that I'm not really into or or like images from a set that I'm not really too keen on following. I mean, you skip through or just like leave alone about a half of that list on my, on, on my watch list at least, like. It's most of, if I clear out and say, okay, I'm not going to look at any of these pictures that are on the watch list, it's usually because they're character sheets or works in progress or, you know, commission prices or something. Mm. But most of the time, if there's someone that I'm watching and they post something, I'm going to look at it and save it. It's, you know, that's the, like 90% of the stuff that I see on my watch list I keep. Yeah, well... I'd say about 50%. I tend to favor it. Yeah, mine's, yeah, mine's a little bit less. I'm huh. picky. I'm very I mean, picky then, as... I mean, if it doesn't happen, but if you go like... Actually, I don't browse Surfer as much as I probably should, at least not for art, but Surfer and Ink Bunny, also they both have those, um, you know, popular and which will tell you you know, in the past two or three days, these are, you know, the 100 most popular images, or, I mean, Surfer has also got these featured ones. So, you know, it's where people have said, okay, these are really good. It's something other people should be aware of. So you don't even need to watch everyone, because if you just want to get a good piece every now and then, you can find them that way. Mm, yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, and I think a lot of, um, yeah, Ink Bunny also pushes um, their sponsor stuff a little bit, don't they? Like, not extremely, but I, I do believe there is, like, a, a slot somewhere for uh, stuff that's been posted by sponsors. I'm not aware of it. 
Mm. I think I think it was a spot like that, or is it or is it just? It, it could just be like they get a little tag next to their name. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Surfery and Inkpenny both give sponsors, uh, and next to their name, you wind up with you know bronze sponsor or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, I've now got a bronze sponsor from Surfery, but on Inkpenny you wind up. I think it's uh, different colored medals or um, I think it, you get a leaf if you're a past sponsor. Yeah, I remember that. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, hmm, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, you said you were going to Europhones in a while, right? Like in a week or so? Like, no, no, next month. Next month, sorry. It's like a couple um, of weeks. Uh, someone's echoing. Uh, does someone have yeah. the mic on? Okay, cool. Uh, what's the expected attendance for that thing? I mean, like the Lakeside one you mentioned was about 50 people. Uh, what's your references, like expected attendance? I think last year was around 2,000 people. Nice. Uh, that the first like big con like that you went to, or? Well, I haven't been there yet, but it will be. <laughs> Nice. I, yeah, but, but we'd, I, I would actually like to check back with you at some point afterwards when you come back from that because I want to hear what that like massive con experience is like. It's probably quite different. <laughs> I mean, mm. I've like I talked to a, a couple of the people at Lakeside Furs and some of the uh, some of them have been to Euroference once or twice, but then they're like, you know, a big con is not as nice, so they prefer then to go to the smaller ones. Uh -huh. um, I suppose it depends. I mean, talking to them, I might not like it because it sounds like it's a lot of parties and things. And I'm not a big party person, mm -hmm. so yeah. It and I'd also heard before that. I mean, for your reference, it was best if you actually went with someone, so you already know someone, you have someone to spend time with and talk to. Because I mean, if they're two thousand people. Even if you meet someone on the first day, you're probably not going to find them again the second day. Mm. Oh. So it's yeah. well. I mean, unless they give you their room number and then ask you to come up the stairs. Um, yeah, that could happen. Has that happened, dude? What in... <laughs> with me or in general? Because I'm pretty sure it's happened. I'm I'm pretty sure it's happened, but I mean, has it happened to you, dude? Fucking what? Don't pry. It's a weird question. Do not it's pry. Not. This is this is the place for weird questions. Oh, no, no. I've look. Do you remember that I was the same person who asked um, EC's PA whether he was going to marry her? Ugh. You, you, dude. I don't know. <laughs> look, I mean, it's just interesting. I mean, like those those kinds of stories are things that I think, to a large extent, don't necessarily get spoken about by the people themselves. I mean, like, what was the? Okay, let's let's put this into a different. Sort of, yeah, for good reason. Like, let's 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 put people. this let's put this into a different perspective. Okay, what is the okay. weirdest thing that happened in this past week? Like, weirdest thing that happened at Lakeside for us, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I mean, things are so different between outside of the furry fandom and inside. It's, I mean. Oh. Within yeah. the furry fandom, do you have like, I mean, you must have stories by now about like, you know, this guy, you know, got caught on a flagpole by his pants because he jumped from the third story building. No, nobody did anything crazy like that. I mean, I think it was, I mean, it's also possible I didn't hear things. I mean, one of the, I wouldn't say negative things about Lakeside first, but difficult for me was, I mean, it was an Austrian convention and most of the people were either Austrian or German, so most of the conversations were in German. So there could have been some things going on that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't recall seeing anything particularly strange. I mean, it was furries being furries. Yeah, so I probably, mm -hmm. probably got drunk and puked in the river. That's about it. There's no, a river in Austria? Oh my goodness, why did I ask? Lots question. of rivers. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's called Lakeside for us. I mean, would assume that there would be some sort of body of water involved. Well, technically, it's no longer near a lake. They're moving near a lake again <laughs> next year. But... God damn it. 
These people. Do, do, do you see that? Like, that's an interesting story. It's oh. just, they used to be at a house that was on a lake. It was Lakeside Furs. I don't know why, but I think it was just this year and last year they moved to some other place where it was no longer next to a lake. Okay. But they're moving to another one where a lake will be five minutes away. Awesome. Keep yeah. the dream alive. <laughs> But there was something in the rules about, you know, not drinking, you know, so much that you wind up, you know, throwing up somewhere or whatever. Although I should mention, they did take donations during the early parts. And then it was the Thursday, they did have a bar open with two furs doing the bartending and free cocktails. So That's awesome. You, it was pretty cool because, I mean, you got to, you could have like all these fancy things and everything was free. I mean, okay, you'd already donated, and I mean, they collected like, I think it was 125 euros that they spent then on alcohol. Most of it was left over. So, yeah, I mean, it was a good time Seriously, to try there was, out. there was alcohol left over. Yeah, I don't, it seemed a bit quiet, I must say. There was supposed to also be a furry disco at the same time. Was and it I think disco like, music? There was music. It wasn't all disco yet. And I mean, they had... <laughs> A strobe light and some of those multicolored laser things, but I think I saw like two people dancing, <laughs> and that was it. And that was just like a short time as well. Was there like a dance off at all, or was it just like I mean, a get together? Maybe there was after I'd gone to bed. I don't know. <laughs> I could hear music still, but I mean, I wasn't there the whole time, I was doing other things, but yeah. But I, I didn't see Would everyone you like to all come the time. Upstairs? Dude, sorry. I, I don't know where everyone was all the time. Because <laughs> sometimes it seemed like there were only half the people around. I don't know. Yeah, they, they could have been doing other things. Or other people. Or, I heard that like one of the biggest things in... Um, I'm not just, it wasn't uh, AnthroCon, but it was uh, one of the things that... Uh, uh, Space Bear Sparks actually had a um, had a podcast about it um, when they were doing MFF, and one of the like stories that they had that 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 came out of there was that obviously the people had what they call a uh, uh, underwear party. Yay! If there was, I wasn't invited. Oh. Damn. <laughs> Okay, cool. So when you come down to South Africa for the South Africa, for, we'll make sure that there's an under party. Uh, under party. Under party. An under party. Ooh, <laughs> the party is all the way downstairs this time. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, and an underwear party, and then you'll be invited. Is that okay? Would you Would you find that to be acceptable? <laughs> Um, it, yeah, that would be interesting, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think I'm coming down for South Africa, unfortunately. Not great Real. in that timing for me. But... No. Oh, okay, understood. <laughs> so sad. So sad. You'll miss out on the, you'll, look, you'll, you'll miss out on your second underwear party. So I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's okay. You can, um, yeah, you can organize that, I think. I'm totally organizing an underwear party. No, no. I'm not. I, I honestly don't know whether to believe you or not. <laughs> if only you knew. Cat! Sorry. Um, Meow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, the, the cat's getting quite wonderfully vocal about everything. She, she loves everyone here, by the way, those of you who were uh, wanting to figure that out. Um, okay, so well, we've covered... The, or, so you're actually going to speak at um, Euroference? You're going to have yes, your own little the plan. Sit down. I, I applied and I talked to the events people about getting you know a session. So what I'm supposed to be doing is actually putting slides together so I can present something. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of thinking about it, not so much slide making. Okay, you've spoken to Zen? No. Mm. I, I swear but you I, mentioned. I know he's what now living in the UK, and I've seen a suit that looked like his character at Eurofern, so he'll probably be there. And then I might try to talk to him. I mean, uh -huh. I do like his art, and he is also from South Africa, so. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Any other notable furs that you've met that side? But like famous furs or people yeah, that were well, interesting? Both. <laughs> I know a couple of people that were interesting. I mean, like I said, the, the issue for me was a bit of a language barrier because, I mean, uh, furs are, I mean, you know, furs are generally really nice and friendly, but if they're speaking in German, you can't exactly sit and listen to the conversation and join in when appropriate. You'd either have to interrupt people or uh, something like that. Or, so, or tap somebody on the shoulder and go, what was he saying? Well, I did have to do that a couple of times because sometimes they'd start talking about something like, quick translate, you know, what's going on? <laughs> mm. And then, you know, find out, okay, this is what's happening now. But, okay. But I mean, most of the time, it was cool. I, I, I felt slightly better. There was one uh, Russian fur there who didn't speak German or English. I mean, I, I think he understood a bit of English because he'd done it at school. And he could, res he could, he, he knew he understood certain sentences. But, mm -hmm. I mean, he couldn't talk to the other people really. But there were some other Russian furs. So, I mean, that, that was the thing. There were German furs and Austrian furs that obviously could all talk together in German. Then there were like some Italian furs that came in a group and spoke Italian. And there were some Russian furs that were in a group and spoke Russian. So, uh, And apparently the Slovenians just weren't there. <laughs> no, there, there was ah. one guy from Slovenia. So he's like the only person on the party bus. <laughs> More booze for him. Just, Great idea. <laughs> let's just make sure it was Slovenia. <laughs> Um, in case I got it wrong. Yeah, well, it could Maybe be Slovakia. Slovakia, Slovenia, Slovakia, what's the difference? Uh, what's the Scratch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Slovenia. Okay. The, the two things are hiding in this world. I think there were actually more than one. I mean, the, the thing is, you know, they're like 50 people, none of whom I've met before, and basically I talked to the organizer online and that was basic, that was pretty much it. I'm not a great people person, so I didn't know everyone. I couldn't recognize everyone. I mean, I start to, you know, okay, those faces are familiar, but you know, you, you only talk. I only talk to a couple of people, <laughs> or at least with any regularity. All right, but I mean, like you, you've gone to a couple of like smaller just get-togethers and things like that, and obviously there they've got a sort of semi, at least attempt to accommodate you right how is the accommodation there I mean like for people who are from more English backgrounds in the furry fandom or in the city itself in in the city itself like when you do go to like outside meets and like small meets and go to the random you know meet down by the bar well I only went to that once but <laughs> I should actually go again because now I know a bunch of the furs that I met actually live in Vienna so uh, but it, it's not too bad because, mm -hmm. I mean, Vienna is a very international city. I mean, mm -hmm. it's got like the United Nations is there and some various other things. Plus, there's a lot of non-Austrians as well. And most, especially the younger ones, m most people there actually can speak at least some English. So mm -hmm. you can get by fairly well. Um, any There's animosity so towards English people? Well, when, when I was, I was the getting... French, the, the French are pretty un, an animos. What would the term have um, have animosity towards? No. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, I don't think there's one using animosity, but uh, there was just one guy when I was trying to get a year pass for the public transport who. I think resented me not speaking German, but otherwise people I have seemed all right. I mean, again, there's not too much where you need to actually speak to people because, I mean, most of the public transport, you don't speak to anyone. You just sort of get on. I mean, that's something I guess wouldn't work in South Africa, but it, there's a lot of trust. So nobody actually, I've had my train ticket checked once in what, seven months that I've been here. Otherwise, you can just get on and off stuff 
without a problem. And it's sort of, you just have to do it yourself. And they, there are big fines if you are actually caught, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you so, ever used Afrikaans as a fail-safe? I have not, no. <laughs> My, plus, I keep saying when occasionally, you know, the different languages comes up, I understand most of Afrikaans, but I really can't say much offhand, you know, because I can't think up the words and the sentence structure properly. So it's something I understand but can't really speak. So, I mean, if it came to it in South Africa, it would be, you know, the sort of thing they speak in Afrikaans, I'd speak in English and have a conversation that way. Yeah. Yes. Um, All right. So, you, wow, okay, so you've never had an opportunity to actually test that theory for us. Because people, people keep on saying that, I mean, if you're, in somewhere, if you're somewhere in Europe and people resent you for being English, speak Afrikaans and they'll laugh at you for about five seconds and then accommodate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true, but I haven't had... Yeah, I mean, it depends, I suppose, what you do. I mean, I mostly go to work and then go shopping where you pretty much put stuff in a trolley and pay at the end. So <laughs> it's not a huge interacting with random people. Um, now, yeah. Apparently there's something, uh, what's it? Um, in some countries I think what I'm thinking of is France or... Flemish, yeah. No, but like in France if you, oh. if you speak um, English and they can detect that you're like, that you come from the US they like they immediately like shut you out and like Spit in your food yeah are mean to you but as soon as they they realize you're trying to like a either speak French to them like and but you're making an effort or uh, B are from some other English speaking nation they like suddenly become like the, the friendliest people in the world <laughs> yeah I'm... apparently. I did mention it because there was a French guy I know here, but I can't remember. I think he said it was mostly like Paris or something like that. Mm -hmm. so. Because Paris is the California of France. <laughs> or something. I don't know. The Quebec of Canada. I don't know. Good job. <laughs> Paris is not in Canada, I believe. Is there a Paris in Canada? No, there's a Paris here. I have here no in idea. Africa. There's a person, there's a Paris here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a London in Brilliant. Canada, Brilliant. apparently. I'm going to put my Fox's Pictures link into the chat. There we go. Sure. Just because, I mean, <coughs> since we've slightly, well, we're sort of still mentioning the con and stuff, but it's got my badge. So, yay. That is actually a pretty awesome badge, mind you. It's like engraved, yeah. isn't it? No, no, it's just normal printed. It was sort of like a steam fur theme. And the problem is, with, with the writing like that, it looks kind of cool, but it's basically almost impossible to read from a distance. So if you know you randomly talking to someone like, "Who's this fur again?" It's quite difficult to try, you know, glance at their badge and say like, "Okay, now I know who I'm talking to." <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's. What's his name? Ba back when? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was this one guy, I thought his name was like Lasky or something, mm -hmm. but it turns out it was Ask in two square brackets. Uh. <laughs> and it was very difficult to see that at a distance. Plus, you don't expect someone's name to have punctuation marks. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, uh, so, I mean, like, what was the theme like? I mean, like, did you guys, were, were people dressed up for the theme? Was there, you know, like, steampunk um, booze available? People with rifles? Somebody with a gas mask? No, so... <laughs> the, Big daddies. The theme wound up affecting, basically, the picture on the con book and the t-shirts... And one of the events, which was going on a steam train. Other than that, there was basically no influence of the theme whatsoever. And at the end, they also had a discussion on the next Lakeside Furs. And one of the topics that was up was, you know, do we need a theme? Is it actually any point in having it? And people were saying, even if it's not 
influencing anything. It's quite nice just to have, you know, a theme, you know, just for fun. Just for the laws in case anyone wants to do something with it. Well, I mean, Nordic furs, uh, and that's actually quite interesting for me. Like, Nordic furs actually accommodates quite well for the English people, doesn't it? I don't know. I mean, at Lakeside, the official announcements were generally done in German and English. I mean, and there were the notes that were stuck up on the walls, those were usually either in both or just English. So they do not, you know, there's non-German furs that go, and that is accommodated. It's just, I mean, for obvious reasons, if you've got mostly German-speaking furs, you know, it's easier for them to speak in German, especially to each other. And some of them aren't, you know, great with English, so they're not hugely comfortable speaking it. Mm. So you also don't want to, I don't know, I, I anyway didn't want to, you know, impose and say, okay, you have to speak English, you know. It just, it feels rude yeah, on my part. I don't know. No, I understand, like, I mean, but you don't want to be left out either. Yeah, but like I say, you can find people, uh, usually like if you saw someone on their own or something, I go talk there, or you find other people that you know and, or have met, you know, the previous day. And so, I mean, it, it wasn't so much a problem, and pretty much, you know, as the day goes on, it gets better. And especially if you're doing the activities and you've got, you know, the groups more mixed, so you've got the other non-German speaking first as well, then obviously English becomes a language everyone can understand you know, mm -hmm. to a certain point. Mm. I mean, a couple of times, you know, I'd be talking to one of the, you know, the Austrian or German first and they'd ask, you know, someone else, like, how do you sp say this in English? You know, what's the word? Uh, you know, because obviously you don't always know everything. Well, it did bring up something which I, know, I, I found quite interesting because, I mean, I don't know how you think about languages there because I have this impression, you know, okay, Europeans, you know, it's, they generally speak more than one language. But from those that were speaking English quite well, it seems most of them hadn't learned English at school. What, I mean, they had and got the basics, but the ability to use English was often from other means, usually like video games, chatting to someone online, or, you know, English movies or something. So, I don't know, it was just, I thought it was interesting. That no, is quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, that happens more often than, like, you know, in, in more cases than I, like, know of people succeeding through, like, just standard education. Like, people consuming media from in a different language, it makes an incredible difference. Like people who raid in WoW or something in a dip for people in a different language, they learn to speak English through that, or they learn to speak English through TV or video games. Like that's that's sort of part of the nice way that games can teach people stuff. That's not just like how to play your game. Like one of these tangential learning things, which is awesome. Because video games. Video games. Uh -huh. <clears throat> hmm. I think it may right. be fun. Mm -hmm. It's actually pretty interesting. I mean, um, like sort of just everything that's sort of like uh, the, the way that certain... Like, would you actually have said that there are any differences from the people that you've spoken about, like, in respect to the way that we interact, say, here in South Africa versus there in... Um, Austria I didn't or Germany. catch the last part. It was a bit distorted. Um, I said, like, would you would you say that there's a difference between the way that there's an interaction in respect to like the ways that furs act around each other um, between, say, South Africa and and you know Germany or Austria? Uh, I don't really think so. It seemed pretty much the same. I mean, yeah, it's. Yeah, we're becoming people... stock standard. Hmm? This is bad. What? <laughs> I said we're becoming standard. This is bad. <laughs> no, I mean, that's just how people are. I mean, you have friends, they, there were a couple, quite a few of them that went outside, you know, with smoke, you know, have a beer together, talk. I mean, that's normal. Then you'd have others that would spend more time on the laptop and stuff. So it, 
it's again, it's the same thing that we do. I imagine it's the same in most places because it's just, it's normal socializing. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there should be much difference between people just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and they've also got, I mean, there's also the Austrian Furry Forum, which seems quite similar to ours. I mean, from what I can understand from the overall structure, I mean, I can't read all the posts, but. Uh. Google Translate, because that's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, it, but on that end, it's, if I just make like the whole thing translated, it's probably not going to teach me much either, anyway. And it'll be these weird sort of, yeah, hmm. weird results. That would be interesting. Okay. Um, is there anything that you personally want to talk about in respect to, you know, your time up there? No. How's the food? <laughs> uh, well, I mostly then cook for myself and... How's I'm your cooking? Exactly. Well, my <laughs> cooking is not great, so <laughs> it's generally, you know, find something that can, is sort of like an instant meal that can just be heated up or, you know, things that you can fry quickly. Uh, I don't do any of the complicated sort of cooking. Mm -hmm. it's, but I mean, luckily there's, I mean, they have spa here because I was like, ah, spa is here. Turns out it's actually a Dutch company. That's oh, all over okay. the place. But I mean, they have, you know, a couple of these ready-made things and some simple things. So it's, that's pretty much what I do. Oh, mm -hmm. the one thing that I found, which was, you know, quite unexpected, because I mean, most of the food is quite similar to what we get, at least in the white culture, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But the thing I've seen... Because, you know, I'm vegetarian, so there's often a limited choice then on, for example, a restaurant menu. But you get, like, this baked cheese. So usually, like, baked brie or baked camembert as, like, a meal. So it's like an entire, you know, piece of camembert that's just sort of, like, baked or fried with some sort of coating. And that's, mm -hmm. like, a thing. But I'd never seen that in South Africa. So I don't know if you guys have. I don't. Have, I don't think so. Like fancy cheeses have never really proliferated much into our culture, yeah. as far as I know. I think. The, I think the closest to that you can get them. The I've just never seen them. Be... Am I here? I've just never seen them cooked and served as like a meal. It's yeah. always been, you know, some sort of side thing or something light. Mm. Yeah, no, I think you are still here. But yeah, mm. I've. I've I'm seen. Like... I've seen like a burger that has a grilled, or deep fried or something wheel of camembert on it and that was apparently really good mm. Mm. It is. you need something to go with it because if it's just you know cheese itself that's quite dull mm -hmm. so <laughs> as a uh, yeah nom, nom, nom. god I'm hungry now <laughs> but but you eat uh, sushi the last time I checked you were eating sushi at some point so I had like the vegetable sushis and things Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, you can make them that way. I mean, I found... Yeah, but I mean, st wow. D Sushi specifically... Let's, let's actually... I, I, I actually do want to speak about this quickly. Like, what, what exactly is the... Um, what, what changes with a, a vegetarian diet? Like, aside from the fact that, you know, meat isn't there. How do you get your... How do you get your protein? So I mean, the thing is, as I've heard, most for most people, protein isn't an issue. In fact, most people get too much protein. I mean, there are other vitamins that are more of an issue than protein. But you mm -hmm. can get, I think it's like, I think it's beans and things have these proteins. And you also get these, like, vegetarian meal type things. So in that case, that's one of the reasons why I shop at the spa. Partly because mm -hmm. it's familiar to me and partly because they have these vegetarian meals, which you know, have the soy or uh, what's the other one they use to make these things, tofu and stuff. And those mm -hmm. usually have, you know, the protein, enough protein. So it's, that's not really an issue. Mm. It, 
I mean, I think vitamin B12 is supposed to be the one that's quite difficult to get. But okay. I, I still have like the dairy and eggs and stuff. So I think, Murderer. That, then, Hang on. I think that then gets everything. If you go like totally <laughs> vegan, then it's a lot more difficult. Uh, and then you have to, I think, imagine. plan very carefully what you eat to make sure you get enough or take a multivitamin. But I haven't collapsed. And <laughs> Not yet. yet. Well, and my sister was vegetarian for like probably over 10 years now and she's quite active and hasn't collapsed either. So. Mm. I don't know. I mean, like it's, it's, it's an interesting sort of perspective, the entire idea of differences between vegetarians and meat eaters, uh, I guess we could call ourselves. But I mean, like the thing is, is that I would always consider chicken to be a vegetable. <laughs> so... <Okay. laughs> Have have some chicken. White meat's good for you. Try some tuna. I'm not sure if that is meant in some joke way or if I'm supposed to seriously respond. <laughs> I'll just let it slide. What, what would your serious response be? <laughs> wait, hold on. I know. Wait. I know. I know. It would be dropping oh. the band hammer. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. You have no power here. <laughs> not here. No. Well, technically. Not here, but... Where it counts. Where, where it does count. But then again, like all I'm asking is, is it, yeah, fish is a fruit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that, fish is a fruit that, and chicken's a vegetable. <laughs> that's the thing. I was trying, because I mean, it's quite difficult to sometimes meet up with people because you know, you're working all the time. And I, want, I, I saw Tumul like twice or whatever, and he's quite a nice guy. I mean, he seems. He seems kind of, he, or at least to me, he seemed kind of intimidating online. But then he was like really nice in real life. And he's a fan of sushi. And then I was like, hey, we should go to the sushi place. And I like had this link, which I found, which was all, it was like a purely vegetarian sushi place. And he's like, oh, wait, it's like, wait, this is without fish. It's like, no, no, I'm not going there. It's like, damn it. But it was amusing. Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. that you can make vegetarian meals to be quite, you know, tasty, I guess. Um, yeah, well, that's, the, the other thing that comes up is if people's idea of vegetarian cooking is just to take a normal meal that they would have had and just take the meat out, obviously it's not going to work very well because you're taking out, you know, probably what it's based around. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, I mean, if you go to the places or people that actually have skill cooking, unlike me, or <laughs> places that, you know, specialize in that, they, they obviously make something completely different, and it's, it's really good. You don't miss it. I mean, it's not mm. something I miss anymore. Well, I mean, you still have cheese good. and eggs, which is pretty good. Yeah, I like cheese. I I'm, I'm assuming that you have a lot of bread and a lot of wheat. Well, um, fair amount. I mean, yeah. Not huge amounts. No, yeah. Yeah. But so also... Yeah. There's um, a small, well, there's a cafeteria on the, the campus, so I usually get the meals there for lunch. And so they've got a vegetarian meal, and I figure, you know, they're bound to be slightly more nutritionally balanced than my own. So I figure that as long as I'm having one of those meals each day, you know, I should be getting everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's, that's interesting. Now, we're sort of coming to the close of the podcast. Um, uh, do you have anything on your heart that you'd like to sort of put out there, you know, your soul, like really, really deep, you know, dig into it and, you know, just sort of get out there and say, like, I kill babies well, on a daily basis. God uh, damn it. <laughs> if I had to say something, it would probably be that I don't think I have a soul because I don't agree with the idea of souls, but... Ouch. <laughs> You're going to you're gonna have to repeat that? No, no, I don't think there are such things as souls. So looking oh. in to the depths of my soul is a fairly futile prospect. Okay, well, in, in, in that case, <laughs> into the very depths of your stomach. Mm. I don't think you quite want to go there. That would be a bit messy and... Yeah. I am hungry. <laughs> but Hi hypothal hypothalamus? <laughs> Amygdala. Yeah. God damn it, Amygdala. <laughs> We, we you, can go to the back you? of my subconscious and see what's there. But, uh, no, no, I, I, do you really want to take that trip? 
<laughs> it's a fun trip. <laughs> Maybe to you. <laughs> what are you afraid of there? I don't know yet, but I'm going to be afraid of it no matter what. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like I said, I hadn't really planned on anything for the podcast, so mm. I think most of the things that are interesting or particularly interesting have been mentioned already. Mm. And, yeah. You have like, you know, one of those don't so. do drugs kids speeches sort of, you know, say oh, somewhere. Oh, no, no, do drugs. Do drugs, kids. Yes, all of the drugs. What? Oh, no. there was... Oh, that reminds me. I'm wondering if it was the latest sign on happiness or if I just looked at an old one, but it was... Ah, yes, yes. The latest one. Or is that the second latest one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is this, is, this, is, this, is this the deepest part of your soul? No, no, but this is relevant to uh, drugs and okay. staying in school. So, well, pretty much it's the drug dealer talking to this child. And he asks, you know, what do you, how much do you want? And, well, this person. Okay. And the person's like, I'll take everything you have. And the drug dealer's like, what, how can you afford all that? And the, and the person says, well, it's really easy if you just stay in school. So, <laughs> if you want your drugs, stay in school. Yeah. Yeah. Go to school, stay in drugs. <laughs> <laughs> don't do <laughs> yeah fair point all right but um again thank you very much uh raccoon for joining us on the podcast I, i'm sorry that it's taken us so long to get you back on here again i'm sure you that know, you actually it's, have it was fun and it was nice having you know some sort of uh English it, conversation. some sort of plan you know rather than the sort of as i recall the first one was quite unguided and mm. <laughs> strange yeah no, but these days we generally have a plan. It's it's you know, talk around the topic and then possibly actually hit the uh, hit the issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I, like I said, I told you other people you might want to talk to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if no, you contact. I'll definitely get in contact with him. This week has been a bit of an issue for me. I you know, classes started again and been genuinely tired most of the time when I get back home and I just sort of veg out. Mm. But yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely be getting back onto the bandwagon next week. Hopefully we'll be able to get one of your uh, people on. I, uh, hopefully they're English. Yeah, speaking though of tired, it d does remind me the one... What? No, continue. Uh, okay, I, I just was breaking up a bit there. Uh, there was something I posted in, on the forum where I specifically asked Ivik what he thought about the hike that we did at the at Lakeside Furs and he didn't respond. So I Was this on my Ask Ivik thing? No, no, it wasn't on the Ask Ivik. It was just on the what are you doing now? Because yeah. we went on a long hike. So, I mean, it wound up, I think, being 11 hours Oof. and we climbed, I think, 1,100 meters vertically and it was about 21 kilometers in distance. Yes. So. How were your legs after that? Yeah, they were pretty sore. Stomped. Well, actually, mostly the right one. And then the next day, I didn't do anything. So. <laughs> I, I can imagine. No, that's, that's a pretty intense hike. I actually like yeah. the thing is, is that sometimes on uh, what are you doing right now, I tend to skim. I didn't think yeah. I actually caught that question. So I'm sorry if I missed it. Uh, yeah, it was a good one. So we went up the mountain and then... It, it was one of our activities. They, according to the con book, it said um, that it would be a, basically a total distance of 12 kilometers and 870 meters in altitude. But one of the guys recorded it with a GPS, and it seems like his results differ. Uh, but we, we went to uh, an ice cave. So we did like most of the, the first half of this hike in like 30 degree heat. Then we went down into a cave, which was basically zero degrees, and then back up. Well, when we got back, it was fairly late, so the sun was going down. And, wow. And there was a restaurant on the way, so we stopped there in both directions. And then, like, your calves seized up while you were sitting down? No, luckily, not completely. And anyway, That's... on the way down, you didn't have to lift your legs, so... Well... You, what, did you just sort of like slide down? I can, just, <laughs> I can imagine that. If you're on a slope, you just move one forward and you fall down that bit, then you move the next one forward, fall down that bit. Complimentary wheelchair. You don't wheelchair. have to lift. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a good hike. 
tough though, especially if you don't hike normally. I, I hike all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm not big on hiking for obvious actually, reasons. Yeah, I, I haven't hiked in years, and I can actually say that with confidence for once. Like normally, I say I haven't hiked in years. Like next thing you know, like hiked a month ago. Yeah. Maybe I'll put the the picture on the forum. Well, I mean, I was thinking of doing a write up for Flavor actually about it, and then I'll have some pictures of things that were going on. Sweet. Sounds like a good idea. We're looking out for that. So, anyway, thank you very much, Raquin, for uh, joining us on the podcast again. Um, thank you for having me. Of course. Really, really enjoyed having you on. Uh, we'd like to thank Victor, Cuddle Wolf, Ninjin who has now become part of the furniture. Thank you very much, Ninjin. You are now the coat rack. Yay! Uh, <clears throat> Kink and ZA and Neon. I know Neon jumped in a little bit late, but uh, he's online nonetheless. Um, he'll be the moving sofa wolf. <laughs> they were very quiet, these y yeah. people. It was very, very quiet today. Um, oh, almost no comments. Mm -hmm. They don't like me. Well, I suppose they stayed, so... <laughs> They're afraid of your damn ban hammer, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you wield too much power. Like, how many people have been banned on the forum? Come on. Like, almost none. And I mean, given, given some of the, uh, what's the word? Some of the drama that actually did sort of go on there, I mean, like, how many actually have been We're none? very, very lenient. What was it? Two? In total? Like no, no, there's... Uh, I can actually find the number. Because it's... Uh, just give me, give me like a second. No, so there are four people banned, but I think two are the same person. Mm. Oh, and yeah, two are the same person, and I think one was an alternative account for someone. So, so they weren't banned for being stupid. No, no, not for being stupid. What, they were what, banned for one being was... clever. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, so it's, it was trolls. <laughs> Just four. Okay. That's pretty awesome. See? We're a really lenient We're bunch. really nice to people. Yeah. So at least those are permanent bands. There were some temporary ones. But... Mm, no. The temporary ones were needed, I think. Oh. Gives them some time to sit down and think. They reflect on their life choices. <laughs> yes. God done we all have to do that at some point. <laughs> Very <laughs> though, serious business. Serious business. So serious business. Much much business, such serious wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, we really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks again, Raccoon, for joining us. And uh, until next time, so yeah. So yeah, cheers, guys. Good night. Cheers, cheers. Damn that cat. And.